I've known since Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations in 1776, and, and even well beyond that, that trade and the opportunity it brings for specialization is truly the source of well-being of societies. Societies that are more open uh, to trade, whether it's in goods and services or to individuals with talents and entrepreneurial drive prosper, ones that are more closed eventually run aground. Uh, we can point to countless examples, whether it's uh, the, one of the Indian empires that thousands of years ago was the, the world leader in terms of the strength of its economy, or the Chinese empire, or the Phoenicians, or the Greeks or the Romans, uh, or the city-states like Venice uh, that made such a name for themselves in the annals of history. And what made them great was fundamentally an openness to trade, specialization, and talent. Uh, the, the secret to the sauce in the United States, what Tom Friedman calls the secret to our sauce, is also an openness. Uh, it's the dream uh, of a melting pot, uh, that we will welcome talent wherever it hails from in the world. Where we've heeded those precepts, uh, our country's prospered. Uh, the danger where we've turned inward, and whether it's the smoot holly protectionist uh, tariff and uh, the consequences that it led to in uh, bringing on the Great Depression and making it as great as it truly was, uh, we are currently uh, taking some of the same steps uh, when you look at openness to immigration and talent. Uh, we recently, earlier in uh, the decade, about nine years ago, started constricting the number of visas uh, that uh, would be allowed under the H-1B program and uh, cut them uh, by over a third. Uh, just uh, in the past few weeks, we've also increased the cost of applying for those visas. The consequences for this generation and future, while it raises $200 million to ostensibly uh, protect our borders, uh, the cost in terms of jobs that won't be created uh, will make the 200 million look like chump change. Uh, one can point anecdotally to companies like Google uh, or Sun Microsystems or Intel or eBay that have really been uh, brought to life uh, by um, individuals that came to us from overseas uh, or George Soros in the world of finance. Uh, what will happen uh, when uh, we're less likely to attract individuals like that? Uh, the Simon School has uh, been very proud of being open to uh, students wherever they hail from around the world, so long as they're willing to make a name for themselves and to contribute and add value to society. We've had individuals uh, such as Eduardo Santola, who's uh, helped run all of M&A for Latin America while at Goldman Sachs, and now uh, with Standard Americas has been the CEO of, uh, uh, all of all of North and South America. Uh, individuals such as Rinda Silva, who came to us from Sri Lanka and runs a prominent hedge fund out of Los Angeles. Gino Santini, head of strategy for Eli Lilly, who joined us from Italy. Uh, that's been the secret to our sauce. Uh, historically, 80% of our international students have stayed in the United States have been creators of jobs. Uh, that percentage now has started, though, to trend downward uh, to 50 percent as there are more opportunities in places like India and China. Uh, the worry for the United States is if we turn too inward and uh, we choose to not remember uh, the lessons of uh, being open to trade and talent, uh, it'll uh, not serve us well over the long run. The latest uh, increase in visa costs is just one example of uh, perhaps well-intentioned as a way to raise additional money, but in the end uh, will be a money loser for this country.